The gates of prisons have opened all over Russia. Tens of thousands of prisoners have been sent to war in Ukraine. Those who survived were granted freedom, and they returned to Russia to kill again. Why is this such injustice? There's nothing you can do about it. Well, it's inevitable. Putin. Putin has granted clemency to serial killers, pedophiles, Satanists, and even one cannibal. Clinical maniacs and just criminals have received the status of war veterans. And they have spread all over the country, and now every Russian can become their victim. How many bloody crimes have they already committed, and what else are they capable of? Watch the special report, The Boomerang of Evil. How has the war against Ukraine turned into an outburst of violence in Russia? He used to land on his personal helicopter right on the territory of the colonies. Prisoners were brought to him, and he persuaded them to go to the war in Ukraine. In exchange, he promised freedom. Already dead, Yevgeny Prigozhin managed to recruit tens of thousands of criminals into the so-called DMC Wagner. Prigozhin has been removed. But his business is alive and well, and now convicts are recruited by the Russian Ministry of Defense. They join the Storm Z units. In total, since the beginning of the war, about 120 thousand prisoners have been taken from Russian prisons. More than half of them died. About 50 thousand survived and returned to Russia, having received the promised freedom from Putin for the fulfillment of the contract. Prisoners who have been at the front for six months, six months, just six months, all of them are free. Actually, the survivors are these spotting by the president. There are at least 50,000 of them. And the pardon of criminals was organized on a line, which is still in full operation today. Of course, tens of thousands of signatures are not personally signed by Putin. His signature is affixed to documents by means of a facsimile. He's got some parting boots sitting there, and they are stacking these papers. Talking to war correspondents about assault squads made of criminals, Putin himself said that he is the one who lets them out of prison to go to war. I mean, they get it right away. It is me who signs the pardon decrees. But the convicts will return home and commit new crimes. Putin's own propagandists can't stand it and ask him such a question. Putin starts justifying himself. Recidivism is ten times lower than uh, recidivism in general. But still, it is the fly in the ointment. Well, that's life. It's complex and complicated, and there is nothing we can do about it. It dictates its harsh rules to us. Well, it's inevitable. This is where Putin is right. The criminals he pardoned have already committed many murders, rapes and robberies. Here is an example of Igor Safonov. He was in prison for attempted murder and robbery. But last year he went to war in Ukraine in the PMC Wagner. And six months later returned to Russia to the village in Karelia as a free man. According to local residents, after returning from the front, he began to drink a lot. He behaved aggressively. Together with a fellow drinker, he walked the streets with an axe, threatening all passers-by. In August this year, two houses in this village were set on fire, and then the bodies of local residents were found inside of them. A father and a son in the first one, and four other people in the second. All of them died of stab wounds. According to the investigation, it was Safonov and his friend who killed them. They also set fire to both houses, trying to cover their traces. Both of them were arrested. At the trial, Safonov constantly emphasized that he was a Wagner soldier and has fought in Ukraine. Another fighter of Prigozhin's PMC walked around his village with an axe. Ivan Rasamakhin. Here he is hitting cars with it. And then he starts lunging at everyone around him. He was feasting, going everywhere around the club, and the next day he was walking through the village. Vanka was walking, shouting at the top of his lungs. He used to have a bee in one hand and a pitchfork in his other hand. A pitchfork, an axe, an knife, and he was walking, yelling, I'll kill everyone, I'll cut up the whole family. He was just yelling. He would just get drunk and go out with a pitchfork or an axe. 
It is like a copy of the same story. Ivan Rasamakhin, just like Igor Safonov, was in prison for murder. And the same way he decided to join the PMC Wagner, went to war in Ukraine, and six months later returned to Russia. Back to his native village, Novy Burets, Kirov region, the villagers complained the police arrested him, took away his axe. The head of the local Ministry of Internal Affairs acted as if he was deeply concerned about it. We have such an individual, he is Rosomachin, who has returned from a special military operation. I will not put up with his presence here until the beginning of May. We'll put him on a train with all his staff to get him out of here. Because you can't expect anything from this comeback. But Rosomakin is a veteran of the so-called special military operation, pardoned by Putin, whereby he's clear on the law. He wasn't going anywhere, he blatantly blew off the police. And then, under the influence of alcohol and drugs, he took an axe, broke into the house of an 85-year-old woman, Yulia Buiskich, and killed her. But you can't be such a monster. Because how can you even pick up an axe towards an elderly person? How can you even just think of it and do it? I mean, you know, it's not like sticking it into a pillow. It's a living person. And I'm angry at whoever let that happen. There's nothing you can do about it. Well, it's inevitable. Convicts pardoned by Putin raped children. There is another PMC Wagner fighter, Alexei Hlebnikov, who raped his 13-year-old niece after returning from the front, threatening her with a knife. And here is another Wagner fighter, Yuri Gavrilov. His victim was his neighbor's 11-year-old daughter. This footage shows how the girl went to Gavrilov's house to pick up the speaker at her mother's request. When the child was delayed, the mother got worried and called the police. The Wagner fighter was detained, but there will be more and more cases like this. Ilya Belostotsky, a former director of Yerowash, was released from prison. Only last year he was sentenced for 14 years in a strict regime colony for the rape of a 13-year-old boy actor. But being in prison, Belostotsky signed a contract with the Ministry of Defense. Now he is on the front lines in Ukraine. He's posting photos of himself on social networks. If he survives, he'll be back in Russia in six months. And he may repeat his crimes again. There's a lot of pedophilia now from those coming out, because the more defenseless the victim is, the more interest it generates, of course. Girls who are harassed by the so-called heroes of the military operation are also defenseless. Neither the police nor human rights organizations can help them. What we've heard mostly from a survivors is that here are these so-called veterans coming back home. Here I'm back, I'm coming all the way over here and we should be together. Prison, then war. Years of unmet sexual needs, and all this is multiplied by an inflated ego. I am a hero, a veteran, so I can do anything. When they come home, they will not tolerate the word no. They will not tolerate rejection. They will overcome it. They will get what they want by force. In the Kirov region, they are now looking for a Wagner fighter, Alexei Kostromin. Previously convicted for killing a woman with a hammer. From prison he went to war in Ukraine, then came back to Russia, and then beat and then raped a 26-year-old girl. She's in the intensive care unit. Brain concussion, facial fracture, stab wounds to the neck. But rapists in Russia are being released en masse. He is one of them, Artyom Buchin. Last year he raped and killed by hitting stone on a head 23-year-old Tatyana Rikutina a resident of the town of Chusavoy. In February of this year, Buchin received a 20-year sentence. Already in August, after only six months behind the bars, he left for the war in Ukraine. And in November, after only a few months, he returned to Russia, having received a pardon, as he had been wounded at the front. This pathological sadist, Vladislav Kanius, was also released, even though his brutal cruelty shocked the whole of Russia last year. All federal TV channels talked about how he killed his victim. In July 2022, Kanius raped his ex-girlfriend Vera and inflicted 111 injuries on her.
He beat her in such a way that there was not a single left spot left on her body. Cranial cerebral injuries, hematomas, puncture wounds. She tried to run to the door to open it. He pulled her away from there, kept beating her. Kanyos tortured the girl for three and a half hours. Neighbors heard all this and tried to call the police, but the police never came. 112 operator. Lady, can you hear that shouting behind the door? What do you want me to do? Where the hell are the police? Why talking like this? How am I supposed to open the door? She's going to be killed today. They say they strangled the girl with an iron cord. The whole country was horrified and sympathized with the mother of the murdered girl. For three hours, the makeup parties tried to at least somehow restore a girl's face. Because everything was ripped, torn, tatted, scraped to pieces. You're partially pleading guilty to the charges against you, is that correct? Yes. Do you agree that your actions caused the death of Pechtelova? Yes. You don't admit that you had an intention to kill her? Yes. What is your attitude towards what you have committed? You don't have any attitude or don't want to tell us about that? Nothing to say. Russians followed the Kanyos trial closely. He was sentenced for 17 years in a strict regime colony, and he didn't even serve a year, as he went to war in Ukraine as a member of the Storm Z unit. He got a pardon. Here's the official confirmation from the prosecutor's office. Now the killer is back in Russia. Kanyos is free. There are pictures of him parting with other pardoned criminals. And also Kanyos was released from the obligation to pay compensation to the parents of the girl he killed. He is now completely clear on the law. The Kremlin considers pardon cases to be the accepted norm. The parents of the killed by Kanyos are shocked. It's just in mockery. Such people go to redeem themselves with their own blood. And to whom do they go to redeem themselves with their blood? Me? Or her mom? Or my daughter who was murdered with extreme atrocity? To your motherland, do you go to redeem your guilt for you turning out to be a bad citizen, as they say, as you broke the criminal law? And for you having killed my daughter with extreme atrocity, will you redeem your guilt with your blood to me? And that's a sign to other criminals you can kill and rape, and you'll face no consequences for it. The whole Russia will drown in domestic violence, murders in blood. All of you will drown in it. Moreover, the criminal psychologists are sure that Kanyus himself will commit new crimes. He's a sadist in this inner drive, this mania, this addiction to this kind of behavior. He'll never get rid of it. He's a lifelong carrier of this quality. So it doesn't matter whether he redeemed or not, he was a sadist before the war, he was a sadist during the war, and after the war he will remain a sadist. The war made Kanyus even more dangerous, like the other sadists. For them, it would serve as an exhilarating pill. That is, on the contrary, it fueled their excitement, their interest, their attraction to the matter. And most importantly, they were officially released from prison. They've been forgiven all the murders and all the violence. They've been cleared by the law. And the only conclusion they'll draw from this is that they can keep killing. Crime and punishment, Dostoevsky in his novel reached the darkest depths of the human soul. But even he, with his Raskolnikov, could not have imagined how dark this soul could one day be made by an inhuman and war-obsessed regime. Putin has broken the connection between crime and punishment. With one action, he smashed the entire legal system to smitherness, thereby bringing Russia back to the Middle Ages. But the Kremlin host couldn't care less. He not only releases criminals, but also gives them medals. For example, it was given to this Wagner fighter, Haik Gasparian, convicted of robbery. Tens of thousands of criminals are released from prison thanks to Putin's secret decrees. 
It's tantamount to just opening the prison's door and letting all the criminals out. All of them, even the most dangerous, Satanist Nikolai Agalabiak was pardoned by Putin's decree. He was imprisoned in a colony for having committed a ritual murder together with his associates, having taken the lives of 40 natures. The scene this Russian press wrote about it will make your hair stand on its end. Satanists killed their victims by stabbing them 666 times in accordance with the sacred number of the beast. The killers would light a fire under a tree and then roast the body parts of the dead for eating. And this is not the only cannibal who was released in exchange for participation in this whole code military operation. There is at least one other case in which Putin parted a cannibal. Here he is, back from prison, posing in his military uniform. Denis Gorin from the Sakhalin region. He's been convicted three times. He committed several murders. His case file says he cut meat of his victims and consumed it. Gorin is now back in Russia from the front lines. He lives among the people. Any Russian can get right next to him. No one knows where he is. No one knows if he changed his last name. He had the right to change his last name. Anyone can become his new victim, or any of the tens of thousands of other pardoned murderers and rapists. But Putin needs them as soldiers with blood on their hands. It's those who will kill Ukrainians on the battlefield without hesitation. What will happen to Russians after the return of such veterans is the last scene to bother the Kremlin. Putin has his own system of coordinates, which does not correlate with the needs and requirements of Russians at all. And in this case, he is guided solely by the Stalinist norm that the end justifies the means. Some will lose their lives, some will fall victim to new crimes by these people, but for Putin, that's just collateral damage. But the violence, hatred and evil that Putin directed at Ukraine boomerangs back to Russia. The number of crimes involving the use of weapons has also increased several times over the past year. Weapons are issued in such large quantities. Who's gonna keep track of where the guns went? I mean, it would be exactly the same. Not only will there be more of these people, but there will be more weapons. So, of course, it's a hellish mixture. And it is organized crime that is on the rise. The Wagner convicts were trained to work as a team. When they return to Russia, they unite, creating fighting groups in civilian life. Professional criminals who have gone through the combat school will rob, kill and rape with the specialized military knowledge, with tactics and strategy. There will be an outburst of organized crime, precisely organized from the point of view of science, according to the manuals they were given at their Wagner school. Gas stations, local officers of banks, that's their target. Then there's private homes or just Russians who were in their own place at their own time. Such as this couple, Kirill Chupko and Tatiana Mastika, they worked as animators. They were driving their car home from the event to Ustwabinsk in the Krasnodar Krai. Right on the highway, they were attacked by a gang led by Dimyan Kivarkian, who had been pardoned for his participation in the war. They took money and bank cards from Kirill and Tatiana, and then the gang killed them both. Their bodies were hidden and their car was burned. The dead couple was mourned by hundreds of people at the funeral. How come? Why is there such injustice? Well, that's inevitable. Meanwhile, the Wagner convicts are called heroes in Russia. There are posters with their images everywhere. They are invited to schools to lead so-called conversations about important sins. Here, one of them, Nikita Lubimov. He was recruited to the PMC Wagner from the colony, where he was imprisoned for robbery, beating and rape. He returned from the front to his native Chuvashia. He arranged drunken fights in his village and killed a man there. Before that, he was on the honor board at the local school. And there are hundreds of similar cases. There were lessons about important things at school, and a so-called hero of a special military operation showed up. He was telling the children how to love their country. He came out of the school, met a married couple, and beat them half to death right there, right in front of the school. Having received the status of veterans, former convicts feel a sense of permissiveness. 
Prison does not scare them. After all, they can commit a crime again, then go to jail, then go to war again, and then get out again, then commit another crime and so on and so forth for many times. The crimes reported by the media are only the tip of the iceberg. In fact, there are many more such cases, but the Russian authorities try to cover them up wherever possible. There was a meeting in the presidential administration and the state media, and in fact there are practically no others left in Russia where they were strongly advised not to mention such cases at all. There will only be more violence, more and more criminals are returning from war, and there will be more and more assaults, murders and rapes. There are also crimes committed by ordinary mobilized men, those who were taken to the front not from prison, but had a peaceful life. Such as Alexander Mamaya from the Nizhny Novgorod region. He returned from the war in Ukraine. They were celebrating a meeting with his wife, but had a quarrel. Mamaev killed her, stabbed her in the chest. Post-traumatic stress disorder, inability to control aggression. Because of all this, the way of domestic violence will also grow. Its victims, women, are already applying to human rights defenders and mass. The wife spoke of her husband screaming while falling asleep, waking up, smashing the house. When he returned from the war, he began to severely beat his wife. The wife herself said that there had been no domestic violence in the family before and that it was after returning from the SML that he repeatedly beat her, threw her against the walls and inflicted severe beatings. Many mentally crippled Russian soldiers return from war, and this state is not engaged in their integration into civilian life. After all, they become a resource for the Kremlin when they commit new crimes and end up back in prison. I and from prison they will be taken again to the front. Putin has created a genuine conveyor belt of death, turning the whole country into a zone of lawlessness and permissiveness. But the death that Russian soldiers are carrying in Ukraine is boomeranging back into Russia itself. The war boomerangs back as well, the one where the enemies of Russians and the main threat to them are their own heroes, recidivist convicts who have been given the status of heroes by the authorities. The violence will cover the entire Russia. Everyone can become its victim. But why should ordinary people be punished for the authorities' crime? Maxim Urwapov, Special Report.